Thanks, Mick. Um, as many here will no doubt recognize, uh, the title of my talk, Scenes of Interpolation, draws from Louis Althusser's essay on ideology and ideological state apparatuses. This essay, known through the abbreviation ISAs, that was written in the early months of 69, published in 1970, and available in English translation the following year. I recall from the outset that the subtitle of the essay is Notes Towards an Investigation, so that in whatever way this essay repeatedly stands in for the entirety of Althusser's writings, Althusser himself insists on the provisional nature of this ongoing study where, he writes, the ideas expounded should not be regarded as more than the introduction to a discussion. Given the permanent need within the text itself to rethink the terms of the argument, the acknowledged hesitations in the text margins and footnotes, and the ways the essay revises arguments from prior texts and becomes revised in turn, and one might ask, written in the immediate wake of the events of 68, how could it have been otherwise? The contingent, conjunctural, over-determined condition of this essay is clearly one of its marked features. Indeed, referring to the essay in terms of ISAs tends to reproduce a conceptual or epistemological coherence that the text itself continually undermines. As we reread the essay today then, taking into account the manner in which Althusser already turns to and addresses his future readers, we might begin to sense the different ways in which the essay is less representative of Althusser's corpus as a whole than inscribed by an ambivalent series of tensions between its historical dependence, even obsolescence, and the terms of an argument that continue to survive their occasion between the historical sedimentation of certain conceptual formations and an ongoing historicity of conceptual transformations, between the text's own contemporaneity and a non-contemporaneity that has been said to characterize all of Althusser's writings. Working through these tensions, the structural ambivalence, I'll start by acknowledging then that the following paper is also written in the same spirit, notes towards an investigation, an introduction to a discussion. The paper has two ambitions. The first is to ask in what ways Althusser's essay addresses the terms of argument outlined in the conference preamble, notably the ways in which in so-called critical visual art, the concepts of apparatus and dispositif, associated then with Althusser, Foucault, and Agamben, bear many structural similarities to these emerging formulations of the tableau where questions of ideology and signification are at, are at work. Since the early 70s, Althusser's essay has no doubt played a formative role in shaping the displacement from visual arts or visual cultures to visual or critical practices, as well as in shaping the complex ways in which the visual arts and culture are coextensive with so-called ideological state apparatuses. I don't want to dismiss this aspect of the essay's reception or the extraordinary influence the essay has played in shaping so much critical thinking, so many interventions within and across numerous disciplinary traditions. But the focus of my argument is somewhat different, asking how the visual, and the photographic in particular, already inscribes itself in Althusser's text. To be sure, a coincidence of terms is more available in French than in English, where Althusser's reference to an apparatus, or appareil in French, is the same term for a camera, an appareil photo, a coincidence which is, at both, which is at once both more and less metaphoric. And as we know, Althusser's essay turns with some insistence around this problem of metaphor. The question at stake here thus becomes how the photographic comes to inscribe itself within the very terms of the text's argument, rather than how photography constitutes a visual practice subject to ideology. To rephrase it in terms once proposed by Sarah Kaufman, our concern here is with a camera obscura of ideology, not the ideological function, representations, the discursive identities produced by the technical apparatus at hand. In short, turning around this question of the apparatus, our problematic turns on rethinking the rapport as such between the visibilities the apparatus brings into appearance and the conditions of visibility or exposure that inform Althusser's presentation of the ideological. 
The second ambition addresses a claim proposed by one of Althusser's most prominent students, Alain Badiou, who writes in an essay on Althusser that one can treat philosophy from within itself as a kind of recording apparatus of its own political condition. We know that Althusser's conception of philosophy as a practice is always tied to its political conditions of existence. But once again, the metaphor is decisive. For Badiou's claim turns on thinking philosophy's political condition as inscribed by the conditions of its presentation, so that it is the very mode of philosophy's exposition, what might seem marginal, merely supplementary to the inner core of its conceptual argumentation, that is, its capacity to think itself through the iterability of the recording apparatus that now informs its political condition. Badieu does not phrase it in these terms, but we might say that the argument that binds the philosophical, the political, and the technical is more a question of presentation than representation, of Darstellung than Vorstellung, and we know that the terms are also importantly Althusser's where this presentation is less the fictional conditions that bind the political to the philosophical than the recording apparatuses, the techne, that render it reproducible, in the sense here of exposed. And that means that the decisive issue posed here is also indissociably a question of the subject. Not the subject that is presupposed by forms of representation, than the subject that becomes what Badiou quite simply calls an enigma. In fact, when he comes to address one of the still, I think, most challenging aspects of Althusser's thinking, again, it is to this question of the apparatus that Badiou turns. It's towards this enigma of subjectivity without a subject, as the intra-philosophical mark of politics, he writes, than the, that the whole of what might be termed Althusser's topographical framework is directed. The English translation of l'appareillage topique as topographical framework seems useful, even as it tends to efface the references to Freud and Althusser's reading of psychoanalysis implicit in the original. The French topique translates what in English is usually termed levels, as in the differentiation of the psychic apparatus into conscious, preconscious, and subconscious levels. However, the topographical presented here is posed, I think, less in terms of levels and more as an appareillage, which we might term, um, which then suggests less the device ordered and structured into different levels than what we might term the spatializing turns of the becoming apparatus, which also then implies less the temporality or narrative of a linear or causal process and more the spacing, the structuring of the apparatus in terms of an installing or an emplacing an in-framing, or a setup. So that what finally is in play here is the thought of a subjectivity without subject as being set up. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. My apologies to those who are already familiar with the essay, but let me recall in very schematic way the broader terms of Althusser's argument. First, the primary question at stake here concerns how to account for the reproduction of the conditions of production. For if we acknowledge that no production is possible which does not allow for the reproduction of the conditions of production, then it follows, he says, that every social formation must reproduce the conditions of its production at the same time as it produces and in order to be able to produce. The question therefore becomes not only how, but where labor is reproduced especially since the reproduction of labor skills is increasingly displaced outside the very sites of production. At the same time, the reproduction of labor power requires not only the reproduction of skills, but also the reproduction of the submission, he says, to the rules of the established order, the ruling ideology. More pertinently, Althusser argues that the problem is not simply the subjection to an ideology, but the reproduction of this subjection. In fact, we'll notice in parenthesis that the essay is framed from the beginning by the conditions in which a given phenomena is not simply produced, but reproduced. So that when Althusser writes that the ultimate condition of production is therefore the reproduction of the conditions of production, what the essay attests to in its argumentation 
is how reproducibility is constitutive of that phenomenon, inscribed in and as its originary displacement, not simply an extraneous or subsequent modification. Secondly, the reproducibility of the conditions of production cannot be dissociated from what he calls the theoretical apparatus that composes the rapport between the infamous infrastructure and superstructure. The latter composed, he says, of two levels or instances, the political, legal, and the different religious, ethical, and political ideologies. It's this rapport between the infra and superstructure that Althusser addresses through the metaphor of a topography, and it's through this metaphor that the exchange between these so-called levels comes to be articulated. Thirdly, Althusser rethinks this topography in order to rethink the question of the state within the Marxist tradition, notably the rapport between the so-called repressive state apparatus and then the ideological state apparatus. If the former shows the state as a machine of repression, whether state administration, army, police, courts, etc., are recognized in relation to questions of power, violence, and sites of contestation and struggle, then the latter takes up a previous initiative by Gramsci, which Althusser then reintroduces through the concept of ideological state apparatus. I shall call ISAs, he says, a certain number of realities which present themselves to the immediate observer in the form of distinct and specialized institutions. Thus, schools, churches, factories, communications, and other apparatuses teach forms of know-how, rules, techniques, skills, rituals that all ensure subjection, he says, to the ruling ideology. So, elucidating the practices of ideology becomes the central task of the essay. It's not the system of ideas and representations which dominate the mind of a single man or a group. It's not an illusion. It's not a question of alienation. Rather, drawing from Jacques Lacan, ideology for Althusser represents, famously, the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. So that what is represented in ideology is not the system of the real relationships which govern the existence of individuals, but the imaginary relation of those individuals to the real relations in which they live. Furthermore, the conditions informing this imaginary relationship cannot be dissociated from the material existence, the very practices of an ideological apparatus, so that it is the apparatus that provides ideology with its materiality. At once multiple, distinct, and relatively autonomous, these apparatuses become for Althusser both the stake and the site of conflict. The site, he says, where the resistance of the exploited is able to find means and occasions to express itself there. I'm not going to rehearse the numerous commentaries and critiques that the essay has solicited since the early 70s. As concerns us here today, arguably the most important transition occurs between the concept of apparatus, in Althusser's sense, and the concept of the dispositif. It's in this sense that we will refrain from translating dispositif as apparatus, as quite often happens in English. As the conference preamble suggests, the writings of Michel Foucault then become pivotal for understanding this tr transition, already determined, no doubt, by Foucault's close proximity to Althusser and his circle. To be sure, whatever the debts to his former teacher and colleague, Foucault's thinking is characterized by a markedly ambivalent rapport with the very critical traditions, both Marxism and psychoanalysis, that subtend Althusser's thinking. Nevertheless, the conceptual proximity of their writings turns in large part on the ways in which Althusser's references to different ISAs open toward Foucault's early emphasis on prisons and schools, barracks, factories, etc., so that we might begin to outline a displacement from repressive and ideological state apparatuses, apparatuses to the intersections between knowledge and power that inform the different dispositif of discipline, security, and governmentality. A displacement, then, where emphasis on dispositif opens towards, for Foucault, a more heterogeneous ensemble of discourses and institutions of the said and the unsaid than, of course, anything that can be found in Althusser. The displacement from apparatus in Althusser's use of the term to Foucault's dispositif then corresponds to a displacement from language and ideology 
to discourse and scenes of discursive enunciation, from emphasis on the state to the more complex entanglements between sovereignty, territory, population, biopolitics, from ideological subjectification to the numerous techniques of the self that are inscribed in the body. In his essay on Foucault, then, what is a dispositif? Deleuze argues that what Foucault opens up in his writings is indeed, he says, a new tableau. Hence, Foucault's writings are said to enact a transition from structural conceptions to serial conceptions, from notions of formation to thresholds and diagrams that are more fluid and transversal than structural, from structural causality and overdetermination to more fluid assemblages of thought. In short, a series of displacements that inform the movement Others have called it somewhat of a mistranslation, from apparatus to dispositif to agencement or assemblage, which then further inform the transition from repressive and ideological state apparatuses through Foucault's disciplinary society to the dispositif that inform what Deleuze now phrases as societies of control. If this very schematic outline serves to demonstrate the increasing irrelevance of the concept of an ideological state apparatus, which becomes, I think, at best a catalyst for a trajectory in which Althusser's name becomes largely effaced, Giorgio Agamben takes up the same conceptual trajectory in his own essay, What is an Apparatus? And again, we should recall that this is a translation of Foucault and not Althusser. Following Foucault, then, he argues that a dispositive is understood as anything that has in some way the capacity to capture, orient, determine, intercept, model, control, or secure the gestures, the behaviors, the opinions, the discourses of living beings. So that what we call the subject results, he says, from the relation, in fact, the relentless fight between living beings and apparatuses. Indeed, while dispositif for a are rooted in the very process of humanization, the multiple processes of subjectification, he says, are now coterminous with the massive accumulation and proliferation of dispositif in what he calls the extreme phase of capitalist development in which we live. In order to think, then, these processes of subjectification further, Agamben argues that it is Foucault who has demonstrated how, at least in a disciplinary society, dispositif aimed to create, through practices, discourses, bodies of knowledge, docile, yet free bodies that assume their identity and their freedom as subjects in the very process of their desubjectification. The dispositif then is first of all a machine that produces subjectifications and only as such is it also a machine of governance. As Agamben cautions us, however, while this may produce the impression that in our time the category of subjectivity is wavering and losing its consistency, what remains at stake here is not an erasure or an overcoming, but rather, he says, a dissemination that pushes to the extreme the masquerade that has always accompanied every personal identity. In fact, in the current phase of capitalism, he writes, dispositif no longer act as much through the production of a subject as through the processes of what can be called desubjectification, so that even if a desubjectification desubjectifying moment is present in all forms of subjectification. What we are witnessing nowadays, he says, is the process is that processes of subjectification, processes of desubjectification, seem to become reciprocally indifferent. As he argues, these processes do not give rise to the recomposition of a new subject, except in larval or, as he says, spectral form. The task thus becomes how to make these dispositif ungovernable, common, a restitution of common use of what has been captured and separated. These displacements then, operative across all these writings, coincide with the virtual effacement of Althusser's name. My interest in outlining these displacements, however, is less to follow this trajectory then imagine the ways in which these same writings can be read back through Althusser, opening his writings to new readings, just as his own later writings, as we might say, reopen his earlier texts. Which brings us back, once again, to what Althusser considers his central thesis in the ISA essay. 
the decisive central term on which everything else depends, he says, the notion of the subject. It also brings us back once again to the term to which I allude in my title, the scene of interpolation. For he argues that there is no practice except by and in an ideology, and that there is no ideology except by the subject and for the subject. If the category of the subject is constitutive of all ideology, it's only constitutive insofar as all ideology has the function which defines it of constituting concrete individuals as subjects. And he say, as he says, you and I are always already subjects. In short, there are no subjects except by and for their subjection. Having made these general statements, there follows what Althusser himself terms a concrete example of the way all ideology hails or interpolates concrete individuals as concrete subjects. It's a scene, one might even call it a tableau, that has been rehearsed, reproduced, and pictured again and again. <laughs> 